Action TV is so the homeless can get recognized and speak out. There are many talented people down here. There's many losers down here. But every loser is somebody's child. It's special in some way. This is Sanctions TV, Skid Row Stars. Richard is, is very, very special because he not only has a drug problem, he has a major medical problem, and he also has uh, antisocial problems. So, I mean, he had like, uh, and mental health issues. I mean, this guy's got a, a lot of reasons to, to not even want to care about, you know, doing something with his life. You can be happy and comfortable without drugs in your life. That's one thing I, I have discovered. You know, um, when I first started this program, I would listen, you know, to Wayne, and, and he'd say, uh, you, know, "You can have fun in your recovery. You can have fun being sober." And I was like, "No, no, you know, because I'm not used to the drugs and having a good time, you know, hallucinating and seeing things that are that are fake." But then I thought they were real. Um, your, your day will come, you know. Um, but just while you're around, don't dwell in it. You know, don't let it uh, bring you down. There's times where I'm by myself, you know, and, and um, I start thinking about it. You know, I start thinking about when I first got diagnosed, and uh, in, in a way, I didn't like it in a way I did. When uh, I paroled, there's this guy in there from the gang in San Diego, and. He always used to always disrespect me, calling me names and, and saying rude things, you know, and I, I would always brush it off, yeah, yeah, whatever. And um, he left, he came back around that corner, and he had an ice pick. And um, he came from behind, started stabbing me, and I'm over here trying to, you know, grab it. Um, and, uh, I mean, he went to work, and then uh, they put me in uh, the clinic. And uh, then they took me, rushed me to uh, UC Davis Medical Center in uh, Corcoran. And um, at, there they put me on cameras. They put a camera down my throat to see, you know, where I was stabbed. They checked my body. Um, I have just, you know, little dots. Like, though, that was a through and through right there. And, you know, I got one over here. <clears throat> he got me right here in my eye somewhere, by my eye. Which I thought I was blind. And you got me right here in my ear somewhere. And then I got a little dot somewhere right here. It, it, it didn't phase me because it took like a like an hour for for my body to come into shock until I realized what happened. And I fainted. Um, and then the doctor said, "Well, you know, your uh, main artery area got punctured, and we need to know if it went all the way down to your main artery." So we're gonna have, we might have to do surgery, and we might have to open you up and check. But we, uh, by law, we have to test you for HIV. So they tested me. That's when I came out positive. And um, they then they said, well, you know what? We don't need to do surgery. We don't need to open it up because it's stopped bleeding. You know, so that means my um, main artery didn't get uh, punctured. If uh, I have anything to say to a young person today. I would have to say, take the time to enjoy life, you know. You don't have to do the drugs. You don't have to break the crime. You don't have to beat up people to be a part of somebody. You know, you are somebody. The guy's been a role model ever since he walked in the door. Well, after, like I said, the first 30 days was really touch and go. I didn't think he was gonna make it. and. Uh, he just uh, turned it around, man. I mean, he just opened up, he started talking, he started trusting people. He pretty much uh, quit feeling sorry for himself, you know, and started looking and, and helping other people, man, and getting into their problems. And uh, Like I said, he's, he's, he's an inspiration to everybody that knows him, man. Uh, everybody knows and loves him, man, because he's the kind of guy that'll do anything for you.